Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. How to create a Navigraph flight plan and then use SimBrief to import that into any aircraft that is SimBrief compatible. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's video, I will go over all the steps in creating a flight plan using Navigraph. This will include all of our procedures as well as airways. We will then take that flight plan, upload it into SimBrief so that we can download that into any aircraft that is SimBrief compatible. That also means if you have the avionics plugin for the 1000, 3000, and 5000, that you may also have the capability of downloading your SimBrief flight plan into those aircraft. Before we get started, I just have one disclaimer. I am not a pilot, so you may see some discrepancies in the flight plan I choose or the various procedures. The aim of this video is specifically geared towards Navigraph and showing you how to use the application itself. If you're wanting a video to show actual real world flight plans, then this is not the video for that. Now with all of that out of the way, if you have any comments or questions throughout today's video, post it down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoy today's content and find it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Okay, so the first thing we need to do for flight planning is to tick on the flights button over on the left hand side of the application. Once you do that, you will see the option to enter an origin and a destination. If you have already created flights in the past, then all of your past flights will most likely show up here. You just want to click on new flight at the top of the menu. Now we can enter our origin and destination airports. To do that, we're going to tick on origin and now just enter the ICAO of the airport. Once you've done that, we can hit add to route. The alternate way in which we can select an airport is to hover over it with our mouse and then left click. Once you do that, you will have an airport dialog menu or an information dialog menu pop up on the lower left hand corner. Once we have that, we can then click on add to route. We're going to select destination and then click add. OK, so now that we have our departure and destination airport, we can now start entering all of our procedures. We'll start with the departure airport first. Over on the left hand side, under our origin airport, we have the runways available tab. We're going to click on the select button. This will give us all of the runways that we have at this particular airport. As you can see here by the not used, not all of the runways are available or are in use at this particular time. Next to each of the runway identifiers is the wind speed currently on that runway. This will tell us which runway may be a good choice to depart on. If you see any runway, such as 36 Center, with a tailwind of 7 knots, this will be highlighted in red, meaning this is probably not a good runway to choose for a departure. The other good bit of information that we have here is the dimensions of the runway under the runway identifier. So this will also help in figuring out which runway you're going to need for the size of your aircraft. So for sake of demonstration, we're going to choose 18 center for today's departure. We'll click add to route. Next, we're going to enter the departure procedure for our flight. Under the runway, we have departures available. As you can see, we have 19 to choose from. So all we need to do is hit select. Once you do that, it will display all of the departures on your screen. Now this may look a little bit confusing, but it is actually very helpful that we can see everything right on one screen. On the left hand side of the screen, this will give us all of our departures that we can choose from. Now, yes, we can go through each individual departure, click on that departure, and then it will highlight that on our screen for us. The alternate way in which we can choose our departure is to simply click on the departure on our screen. First, we need to take a look at the direction of our flight today. As you can see here, we're going to be traveling east. So I don't want to pick any departure on the west side of the airport. For today's flight, we have three departures that are going to be very close to our flight plan line. We have the Elvis 4, 
the BB King 7. For today, I'm going to go with this one right here, which is the Elvis 4 using the E tree transition. If we look over to the left hand side, when we select the departure on our main map screen, it will also highlight the transition and the departure that we had selected. So it makes it very easy. All we need to do is to click Add to Route. All right, so now that we have all of our procedures entered for our departure airport, now let's go ahead and enter all of the procedures for our arrival airport. So just as we did above, we will first go to the available runways. We'll click Select. As you can see here, we've got a bunch of runways that are not being used. Today, we're going to choose runway 9 right. If we take a look at the wind, we've got a headwind of 8 knots and a 2 knot crosswind. Perfectly fine. You also want to verify the dimensions of the runway that it will be adequate for your aircraft. Once you have verified all the information, we can then hit Add to Route. Next, we're going to enter the arrival for today's flight. As you see here below, we have 8 arrivals to choose from. Again, we will left click on the select button. All of the arrivals will be listed on the left hand side. Now again, you can go through each one of these individually by clicking on the drop downs and going through the different transitions, or we can just click on the arrival on our map. So the first thing we need to do is to zoom in on the airport. Now if we take a look at the runways, we're gonna be using runway nine right for our arrival. So that's going to be on the west side of the airport. In saying that, I do not want to choose any of the arrivals on the east side of the airport because that would put us way out of the way. So by looking at the arrivals that we have on the west side, I could choose any one of these at the very top, or I could choose any one of these arrivals down here below. For today's flight, I'm just going to randomly choose this arrival right here. Once we choose our arrival, on the left hand side, the arrival as well as the transition will be highlighted. We can then left click to add to route. The last procedure that we're going to enter is our approach. Again, we're going to hit the select button next to the approach, and this will give us all of the approaches available. Now, the recommended approaches will be at the very top, and then all of your other approaches will be down below we can click on the drop down for each of these and then select which one we want or we can just go to our map and then select the approach in which we want to use. For today's flight we will choose the ILS to runway 09 right using the Andy transition. To add this to our route we're going to left click on add to route. Before we go any further I just want to explain why it's important to use an initial approach fix as opposed to a final approach fix when you're choosing your approach to use for the aircraft. Now, this is really going to be important for those of you who are using a G1000, 3000, or 5000 GPS unit. If we take a look at the profile section for the approach plate for Atlanta, you will see that the initial approach fix, the one that we had chose, is the Andy transition. The flight restriction for this is 7,000 feet. The final approach fix is the Bernie transition, the flight restriction for this is 2,700 feet. If you have any of those three GPS units and choose a final approach fix, you will not have any of your flight restrictions show up on your GPS prior to your final approach fix. So therefore, if ATC vectors you in at the Andy transition, DFINS, or any transition before the final, you are not going to have the flight restrictions on your GPS. So I hope that answers any questions as to why you may want to choose an initial approach fix versus a final approach fix. All right, now we have all of our procedures entered into our flight plan. We can now start entering some waypoints and airways. The first thing I want to do is to hide the flight information on the left hand side. So we'll left click on hide. Next, we need to display all of the airways that we have available on the map. The map I'm using right now is the VFR map. If we head over to the icons on the left hand side, we can click on VFR, and then I'm going to go down and choose IFR low. Those are the airways we're going to use for today. Once we click on that, that will then change our map structure and show us all of the low altitude airways 
for us to use. Now we need to decipher which airways are going to get us from point A to point B the fastest. It looks like if we use the T239 airway, that will take us all the way down to the Vulcan VOR, and out of the Vulcan VOR, T239 will put us very, very close to our arrival waypoint. All right, so now that we know the flight path in which we want to take, now we need to enter this information. But doing this is going to be a little bit different. So let's first start with the entry waypoint to the airway. If you're unsure if a particular waypoint is on the airway itself, then we can just click on the airway. When you click on that airway, it will again bring up an information box on the left hand side. If you click on fixes, this will give us the two different waypoints that are on this particular leg. So as you see here, we have the G-A-N-T-T and the S-W-I-K-I waypoints. So either of these two waypoints are going to be an acceptable entry for the airway. We can also enter the airway before that waypoint. So let's go ahead and click on this leg. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that we have this Z-A-T-E-L waypoint that looks very, very close to the airway. But if we check the fixes box, you will notice that that waypoint is not on that airway. So this is very important that you click on the segment of the airway to verify that the waypoint that you want to use to enter or exit the airway is actually on the airway itself. For today's flight, I think we're going to use the ICAVY as our entry waypoint to the T239 airway. To do this, all we need to do is to left click on the waypoint. Over on the left hand side, we will have the waypoint information, and then we can just click Add to Route. Now we need to choose where in the flight plan we wish to enter this waypoint. It's going to be after the last waypoint in our departure, which is the E tree waypoint. We'll click E tree, it's going to be after that, and then we can click Add. All right, so now that we have our entry waypoint to the airway, now we can follow the T239 airway down until we want to exit the airway. So we'll follow down to the Vulcan VOR, out of the Vulcan VOR on the T239 airway. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I think we're going to exit the airway right around in here. So we're going to again click on the segment of the airway and then we'll look at the information box on the left hand side. You want to verify that you're using the T239 route and then we're going to click on fixes. In the fixes we have either Kylie or hand on this segment. So that is going to be our exit from the airway. For entering airways is going to be a little bit more complicating and we can't just click on the screen and add the airway. So let me show you how we're going to do this. Navigate to the upper right hand corner where we have the little drawing icon. This will allow us to manually edit our flight plan. We're going to click on that and now we will manually enter the airway on our flight plan. So let's scroll up here. We know our entry is going to be the ICAVY waypoint. So we're going to find the ICAVY waypoint in our flight plan. We're going to skip one space and then type T239. And that's going to be the airway. Now what we need to do is to enter the exit waypoint on that airway. We have already chosen the Kylie waypoint as our exit from the airway. So we're going to head back up to the top. From the T239, we're going to now type in Kylie. Okay, and that should be it. All we need to do now is to click the Done in the very upper right, and that should enter the T239 airway into our flight plan. And there we go. One caveat to using airways in Navigraph is that it will input all of the waypoints in that airway. As you can see at the top here, all of these various waypoints along the airway. 
Now, for Navigraph alone, it is very important that you keep all of these waypoints there because if you delete one of these waypoints, then it will mess up your flight plan. Now, that's really not going to matter when we transfer this flight plan over to Simbri. Okay, so now that we have our completed flight plan, what we want to do now is to import this flight plan we had just created into Simbrief and generate a flight. To do this, the first thing we need to do is to go over to the Flight tab on the left-hand side. Give that a left click, and then you want to highlight Export at the top, and then left click. Next, we're going to click Copy to Clipboard, and this will copy our entire flight plan that we had just created. Next, we're going to jump into Simbrief. Now, this is not going to be a complete tutorial here. If you want a basic tutorial of Simbrief, I've done that down below in the description. There is a link there. Just keep in mind that it is an older video, so some of the things might be a little bit different as well as my editing style. So now let's get on with entering the information for our flight plan. First thing we need to do is to enter our departure. Then we're going to enter our arrival. Once that's done, you want to make sure you have the correct aircraft type. You also want to make sure that you have the correct unit selected. And then we're going to scroll down to the routing section. Now, traditionally, Simbrief was used to create your flight plan and then to import that flight plan into Navigraph. It really wasn't meant to do it the opposite way in which we're doing it today. So here's how we do that. We're going to highlight the selected route in the bottom, and then you will paste your flight plan that we had just copied. Now, before we go any further, we need to make sure that we have a couple things set properly. First, we need to take a look at our departure and arrival runways and make sure that they are correct in Simbrief. So if we take a look here, we are going to be departing on 18 center. And if we go up to the departure runway in Simbrief, it is selected 18 left. So we're going to click on the drop down and check 18 center. We can hit yes to the drop down and we're just going to keep current route. Next, we're going to go over to the arrival runway and we are going to be arriving on 09 right. If we take a look at Simbrief, they have us coming in on 08 left. Again, we're going to click the drop down, select 09 right. Yes, keep current. All right, so now that we have verified that our departure and arrival runways are correct, we're not going to go over any of the other stuff here, but the next thing that we need to do to verify the route is to click Analyze Route. Now, if it hasn't already displayed the route that we had chosen on the screen, when you click Analyze Route, it will then recalculate everything on our screen for the route that we have chosen. One thing that you may or may not know about Simbrief is that it does not carry over all of your procedures to your flight plan. For instance, if we zoom in on our arrival airport, you'll notice that we do not have the approach procedure entered. And that's because generally you're not entering your approach procedures until you're getting closer to your airport, and then ATC would then give you what approach you're gonna be using. In any case, now that we have our flight plan entered, all we need to do now is to hit the Generate Flight button, and this will generate a flight using the flight plan that we had just created in Navigraph. And there you go. As you can see, we do have an error with cargo and payload, but I'm not really concerned with that right now. At this point, you can spawn into your aircraft of choice that has your Simbrief integration, and then import your flight plan right into the aircraft. All right, folks, that's going to wrap us up for today. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on the channel. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back with you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.